Hi, this is Glenn Dane. Say, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the partnership uh, between LIFT, this is an institute on lightweight metals, and the ASM Education Foundation and trying to help uh, ed educate students in the K-12 pipeline and do this for the national benefit. Uh, I'm going to be very brief uh, as I try to most of the time with this. Uh, first of all, I want to say is uh, the, the, the two organizations have a lot of acronyms floating around. First of all is the ASM Education Foundation. ASM used to be used to stand for the American Society for Metals. Uh, American and metals were a little bit restrictive. Now it's just ASM and it's really the Materials Information Society. LIFT, um, and let me go back here. LIFT stands for Lightweight Innovations for Tomorrow. And you see that down by the tag there, Lightweight Innovations for Tomorrow, at the bottom of that. And that's what LIFT is. LIFT comes from a federal program called the Light Modern Metals Manufacturing Innovation Institute, or LM3I, Light Modern Metals uh, Manufacturing, those are the three M's, Institute, LM3I. And at the end of this, I'll introduce you to a video that you can hear a little bit more about what LM3I was supposed to do. And then in order to respond to that, Ohio State, University of Michigan, and EWI came together and formed a not-for-profit corporation called ALMI, which stands for the American Lightweight Materials Manufacturing Innovation Institute, A-L-M-M-I-I, -I, and that operates LIFT, and we decided LIFT was a little bit easier to, to use and to say than any of these other acronyms. So that's what, that's what this Lightweight Metals Manufacturing Institute is called, is LIFT, Lightweight Innovations for Tomorrow. And they've got a very good website at lift.technology. I'll tell you a little bit about that as we go. There's really just three things I want you to know about Lyft. Um, first of all, it's a large center that was really set up because manufacturing is so central to the American economy, it's so central to American defense, that the federal government came in, put out a competitive bid that put in about $70 million. It was matched with about 100, and about another $70 million in uh, corporate and state money, and we've got this $140 million center that's supposed to have a five-year lifetime and, and be self-sustaining thereafter afterwards. There are two areas of focus in LIFT. First of all, there's technology development. We're really developing new technology for lightweighting, for manufacturing, and that's going on. And this, this is so, America, so the United States can be competitive with other countries that are doing things like this. The other part, part, and this is what's related to this whole thing, is really about workforce. And workforce goes all the way from kids to uh, retiring and incumbent workers. And we've got to replace a lot of people with skills that know how to make things. There's actually a, a bit of a crisis in the United States uh, with respect to that. That's why we're doing things like this. The last thing I want you to do is, is please keep an eye on Lyft. We've got a, a really good website, lyft.technology. It's not a .com, not a .edu, but a .technology. And then the other thing, if you're of the Twitter type persuasion and you like to tweet uh, or read tweets, at News from Lyft also has, uh, has information about Lyft and that uh, is, is, is continually being generated. There's one or two tweets a day that come out of Lyft and they're usually pretty good interesting things. I'd encourage you to take, um, keep an eye on that. So again, th th this is uh, the website lyft.technology. This is sort of what the website looks like. Uh, this is a piece of the technology page. There's a workforce page telling you about the consortium and the members and then there's also a lot of good press stuff. And it doesn't all show up here, but there's Twitter and LinkedIn and, and all that other good stuff as well. In terms of technical organization, there are six technology, uh, technology development pillars, which really all have to do with the way we make things. Uh, there's melt processing, which you might know as casting. Often we make things by making powdered metals, squeezing them together, making other high performance bodies. Powder processing is part of it. Thermomechanical processing is part of it. Um, I lead the pillar on no novel and agile processing, trying to do things without uh, big presses and so forth. Coatings and corrosion are a big deal. We coat things after they're made. And then uh, we've got to join and assemble things. And those are the six basic pillars of, of uh, technology development. And then there are cross-cutting themes that go with that. And one of the things that's really a big exciting idea is integrated computational materials engineering. 
That's being able to design materials and structures in the computer, get them to work the first time. This is closely coupled to design. There's life cycle analysis. Um, validation and certification. This is a big deal if you're going to make a new component that's going to go up in an airplane. You've got to know it's going to work. You've got to know that your entire supply chain is certified, close to supply chain, as close to cost modeling. Corrosion goes pretty closely with joining, and, uh, with coatings rather. And then ballistics and blast is something that's also very important. Uh, the U.S. Navy and other parts of the military are, are very interested in um, what's going on with, with uh, lift as well. So um, I was trying to tell you, coatings goes with corrosion. Ballistics and blast, because it's a military program, we want things that are survivable, things that, that really uh, can go out in the field and, and, and save lives and keep people out of harm's way. The other thing that's really important in lift is workforce. And uh, really what this is, is really all driven by is demand. What kind, of, what kind of people do we need in the world? And do we have enough of them or not? And it turns out in the area of manufacturing, the United States has become short lately. Um, we've had a lot of people retire, and we haven't really been educating people with these kinds of hands-on skills the same way some other countries have. So as a result of this, there is a bit of a, a competency gap, and there are great jobs in these areas which are uh, associated with lift. And uh, Emily DeRocco is running our workforce, uh, our, our workforce uh, division, and she's working very closely with both econ economic development organizations, state and local workforce centers, um, workforce boards, investment boards, even unions are involved with this. Education is uh, a big deal, and this goes all the way from uh, community colleges, uh, uh, factory-related grants, trade adjustment grants, all of these things. Uh, military is very involved. And then uh, also there are certain areas we're trying to deploy this. Focus Hope is an area that uh, is doing workforce education for disadvantaged people in the Detroit area. An important area here, this really goes all the way from K-12 all the way through people who are actively working, people are retired, people getting PhDs, and a common thing we talk about is having on-ramps and off-ramps to to these careers, having multiple ways of getting in, working for a while, finding you need new skills, popping out for a while, getting some more skills, getting back in. And this is sort of uh, what you see along those, those road maps. And this looks almost more like a subway line than multiple on-ramps and exit ramps. But the idea is you're never too old to learn, and, and you should be always trying to educate yourself for a better career. So. Um, that's really all I've got for now. Uh, again, uh, big websites here are, are Lyft Doc Technology. This is the opening page from that, and the news from Lyft. And um, at, at the end of this, uh, you can watch this directly, or I'm going to put this on here. There's also a great YouTube video where the U.S. government made the case that uh, we need a center like this. This is something that they put together, and I'll, I'll put this on and uh, show this show this to you now.
Okay, that's it. Uh, we'll see you on the internet again soon. Thanks. Bye.